For our purposes here, though, what will be even more interesting is the way that we can represent these results in our visualization. First, let's try going over here to the visualization window and selecting graph options. Now, graph options basically allows us to change some of the default ways in which we can view edges, vertices, as well as the background for our network. For now, let's go to the vertices window and we'll change the default color of black vertices to something a little bit more exciting. We can go with green here. We'll see what happens. Hit OK. Confirm that as well and we can see the change is already implemented in our visualization section here. We have green nodes still with the gray arrows pointing to them but it's a little bit different. We can customize the network pretty much at will in this way. So, if we were to go back into graph options, we could change the color of these gray edges from gray to, for example, blue, and hit OK there. Now you'll notice there's an additional option here for selected edges. The edges that are selected, meaning edges we've clicked on, or edges whose nodes we've clicked on, vertices that are part of an edge, are colored red at present. We can change that around too if we'd like. Maybe we'll change that to black. Once again, hit OK, and again we see how the network has transformed. Now in this case, we've chosen colors that are very obvious and easy to see, but which might obscure some elements. So, for example, the green nodes aren't exactly very visible amidst this huge mess of blue edges. It's useful for illustrative purposes, not so useful if you actually want to interpret the network itself. You can experiment with networks yourself to see what visualization standards you prefer. Now rather than making changes like this across the board to all of the nodes in our network or all of the edges, we could go node by node and edge by edge to make changes individually. For example, right now we're still in the vertices worksheet. So if I were to select the first vertex, for example, you'll notice that simply by going to this row, the vertex is highlighted red within the network, just as the defaults we left in place tell it to do. Now once I go to this row, we can change the vertex shape, vertex size, its color, opacity, visibility, and so forth. All of these standard visualization elements. Well, let's go ahead and change the vertex size. And I'll substantially increase this. Right now it's at 1.5. Let's increase this to 5.5, for example. Almost quadruple it in size. We hit OK. Now, predictably, this change is not immediately effective right here. We have to refresh the graph, and as you can see, the size of that individual vertex has exploded in comparison with the others. That's great and all, but it's rather time consuming if we were to revise the attributes of every one of these vertices, as well as all the edges and so forth. It might be faster if we had a way to do these things automatically. That's where the autofill columns function comes in handy. If we go to this button right here under visual properties, this is the autofill columns button. We'll click that, and this is where our graph metrics really come in handy because we can use those now to define the attributes of the edges and the vertices within the network. So for example, we can go to the vertices tab and we can change the vertex color based on its degree. Remember, we already measured this using the graph metrics tool earlier. Now I select degree and we do need to go and set some options as well, so we'll click the blue arrow on the right side and it asks us what exactly we want to do. We want to change the vertex color options, just like we said. Now the source columns values are numbers. We'll go ahead and just map this out from the smallest number in the column to the largest one. So in other words, the least prominent uh, individuals in this network, the ones with the smallest numbers in terms of degree centrality, will be the closest to red. Those who have the largest numbers in the degree centrality column those who have the most connections with other Twitter users will be closer to green. And we'll hit OK. We can also change the vertex shape in a similar way. 
we can define this, for example, based on page rank. And again, we go to vertex shape options. We can define exactly how we want these things to look. So for example, if the source column number is, let's say, greater than 10, then we'll set the vertex shape to a disk. Otherwise, the vertex shape we can leave as, let's say, a diamond. We hit OK, and we auto-fill the columns throughout our data set. Basically what this does is it automatically enters data into our spreadsheet for the attributes that we've defined. So we hit the auto-fill button and let the program work its magic, again, based on the graph metrics that we've already measured. Should be noted, if you've not already gone through the graph metrics, you won't have a whole lot that you can do here because the program doesn't know things like degree centrality automatically. You have to tell it to go ahead and make those calculations. With that said, we can go ahead and close this window and take a look at our graph. Once we refresh it, of course, just to make sure everything's been done the way we'd like. Now, there haven't been a whole lot of changes to this graph. The main difference we can see is, well, there are these tiny little boxes here. These are somewhat hard to view. Unfortunately, most of these nodes are rather small, so it's difficult to see the hollow diamond shapes that were created. The good news is that we can always change those hollow diamonds that are difficult to see simply by going back to autofill columns. It's very easy to undo any decisions like this that we've made. So if we go back to vertex shape, for example, we can change page rank to something else. So if page rank is greater than 10, vertex shape is a disk. Just to give us a little more variety here, we can change this number from 10 to something a bit higher. Maybe try 100, just to, again, see what happens and see if this helps our visualization. Importantly, we change our otherwise condition from a diamond to something else. Let's try a solid triangle this time, noting that solid is in the name, so it's probably not going to be a hollow shape. We select that option, hit OK, and again, auto-fill the columns. And we see what happens. And this time, things are a bit easier to see. You'll notice that we've got a large solid triangle here, this one shape, and we've got a bunch of other triangles, much smaller, that harder to see, but at least they're not hollow anymore. Now the problem we've been running into in terms of our visualization is a very simple one. We have one node set to a reasonable size. Remember, we manually set Backtrack Linux to a size of 5.5. This is the node that appears here. Everything else has been left at the default of 1.5, which, as we can tell, is minuscule. Thankfully, vertex size is just as easily changed as those other attributes. If we go one more time back into the autofill columns and the vertices tab, we can change vertex size to followers. This indicates that a vertex's size will be determined based on the number of people following that particular vertex in the Twitter network. We can check the options, go into vertex size options, but again, these seem perfectly fine for our purposes. We'll hit OK and autofill those columns. And we can see now if we look in the visualization, exactly how that's changed. We have one node who seems to be very prominent in this community, and a few others of varying sizes. Most of the people in this network are still at the minimal size here, indicating that they're not very prominent in terms of having a lot of followers. It's likely that very few people in this particular Twitter community of the 101 people who we sampled have followers who happen to be among those peers within the network. Some do, and some simply do not. They might have a lot of followers, but those followers just might not be in this particular sample. At this point, we've explored the Node Excel interface, we've done visualization with our sample workbook, and we've imported real data from Twitter and begun to analyze it. Having done all this, you're now perfectly capable of beginning to analyze social networks yourself using the tools that Node Excel has to offer.